2020 has been a crazy year for us all. And perhaps one of the few antidotes to keeping sane has been obsessing over our watch collections and planning the next one. With more time on our hands and in some cases money in our pockets that would otherwise go on holidays or taking the family to the movies. The temptations of this hobby have led me to an authorised dealer on more than one occasion. Now I continually ask myself what my collecting goals are and going into a new year, should I have any? Well, I don't really consider myself as a collector yet. Now I'm definitely an enthusiast and if pushed, my goals in 2021 are to keep the numbers low and save for one or two pieces that I really must have when I find them. So no G-Shocks, no Seikos or Swatches. I really appreciate these budget brands, but I'm acting out of need rather than want. Where need is about keeping cash aside for the future and not the here and the now. Now let's see how I get on. So thinking ahead for the next acquisition and finding that watch that either complements what I already have or gives me a little wink from the wrist, let's take a look at what I've tried on this year and which pieces either resonated with me and which ones disappointed. Plus some key moments in the year for the channel. I'm Andy and welcome to the English Watch. Now let's step back in time to the start of 2020 and walk through some of the highlights. Drop me a comment and let me know which is your favourite. And while you're there, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're enjoying this content. Now this is a two-part series as I tried a lot of watches on this year. In the first part we tried a few high horology pieces, I actually buy two watches, the only ones of the year, and we have to manage through a lockdown, where not everything goes to plan. Ok, let's get started and head back to January 2020, a time where there was talk of a virus brewing in China, along with unrest in Hong Kong and what the implications could be to the supply of Rolex steel professional models. Well, how'd that work out for everyone? I started off at the higher end as I dropped into a dealer I hadn't tried before, and that was Pragnall's of Stratford-upon-Avon. I took the salesman through my collection and expressed how I was looking for something in the 40mm range. And yes, we had the discussion regarding a Rolex Submariner. Sadly, no joy, but it will be interesting to see if I get the call in January 2021, as he did indicate 12 months and wrote down the fact that I'll be 50 very soon. Anyway, while there, I tried on a few finer pieces that took my interest. The Patek Philippe Calatrava Pilot Travel Time in 42mm. This was just for fun, and it was nice that they engaged in my fantasy, and never be too shy to ask to try on expensive pieces. They're usually more than happy to indulge you. The Blanc Pound 50 Fathoms Bathyscaph in 43mm was a hit for me. It felt good on the wrist, despite its size, I love the finish and maybe one of the shortlists for the future. Now sadly I couldn't warm to the JLC Reverso. The tribute to small seconds in 27mm felt a little bit too small for me and I couldn't imagine myself ever wearing it. I'll try the larger size on at some point and I'm sure there's a Reverso out there for everyone, including me. Now February turned into a good month when I was called by Goldsmiths in Birmingham and offered a Rolex Submariner date. This was the previous version, 116610LN in 40mm. Now this was perfect timing and I'm wearing it now as it made the perfect birthday present. I had previously passed on the regular Submariner twice in 2019, holding out for the date version and I was not disappointed. Sadly no swag or freebies with the professional range, just the watch but definitely worth the 9 month wait. Now March was a launch year for a new YouTube channel called The English Watch. Hi, I'm Andy and welcome to the English Watch. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about my Tudor Black Bay GMT. Alongside a website that maybe isn't getting the love it deserves. As always, time is the enemy with these things, but I do try. Now I picked up a nice crocodile strap from ABP Concept Paris for my Speedy. A nice addition and far, far cheaper than the Omega equivalent. I also learned of the imminent replacement for the Speedmaster Professional and released a video that still gets plenty of views, despite some toe curling edits as I develop my style. Now you can see all the latest news on the development of the new Speedy in my more recent and much improved edit, I'll drop a link. And March also saw the onset of this horrible pandemic and working from home and the sudden shift in movie releases such as the 007 movie No Time to Die. Now this was my last watch acquisition of the year with the Swatch Q Limited Edition. Swatch have since re-released this watch in anticipation of a November film premiere with the blue instead of red detailing on the dial. But a month on and we're still waiting for this damn film to come out. Now I'm a massive Bond fan and I can't wait for the 2021 release and maybe another Swatch queue, perhaps with green detailing this time. Who knows? April came and went as we all went into lockdown 
but it gave me a chance to play with my camera for some still work. And this was also the month my Planet Ocean decided it wanted to self-destruct and would now need to wait for the Omega Service Center to reopen before anything could be done. May brought a few rays of hope from all the chaos going on in the world. Firstly, I was finally able to send my Planet Ocean off for repair, but we also had a couple of Speedmaster treats to feast on. The first was the tease of the upcoming Silver Snoopy Award, due on the 4th of October to celebrate the 50th anniversary, but also the return of manned spaceflight with Doug and Bob wearing their Speedmaster X-33s. Now come on, who wasn't wearing their Speedy during takeoff? As summer blossomed into June and lockdown started to lift, not only was I getting handy with the camera, but we were also allowed to venture back to the high street, and I wasted no time getting back to Pragnall's at Stratford to try on the new JLC Master Control range. My attention was mostly directed at the Master Control calendar, as I have a lusting for a moon phase watch, and trying this watch felt good. It was a lovely size at 40 millimeters, with just the right amount of thickness and heft to cross between a dress and a sports watch, most definitely on my shortlist. Now I also found that the regular date version was solid value, with my only concern being the light tan strap, but that's fixed easily. On this visit, I was also acquainted with the new 007 Seamaster 300 in titanium on the NATO strap. Now, yeah, this was a nice watch with some interesting detailing colors, and I did warm to it, but I'm no NATO lover. In the end, June turned out to be a busier month for the old English watch, where my attention was also turned to vintage pieces. Firstly, a trip down memory lane to where this all started with my 1980s date just lookalike Seconda that served me well through my college and university days. But then an email from a viewer to the channel offering a vintage Speedmaster from my birth year of 1971. This was a 145 2269 in reasonable condition for its 49 years. But I was in no position to offer the seller a fair price, and maybe this will be the one that got away. So as I'm going through the year jotting my thoughts down, it's clear this could be a really long episode. So I'll end it here and start part two when we come back in July. Highlights of the first six months? Well, it has to be getting my own Rolex Submariner. This remains my most expensive watch purchase to date. Is it worth the money? Well, I'm in no hurry to move it on, and it gets plenty of wear, you know. The JLC Master Calendar was and remains a firm favourite, despite not being an annual calendar. I love the look and the feel, and the moon phase is the icing on the cake. Now, yes, it's nice to try and protect Philippe, but I never looked at it as a watch that I could ever buy, so it didn't really tug my heartstrings that much. Now, if you like how this is all going, please give it a thumbs up and leave any comments about the watches so far. Part two will be out very soon, with plenty of action since lockdown was lifted, so please check that one out also. Anyway, I'm Andy, this has been The English Watch. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.